Are you the same Amethyst P. Garcia who's placed on community supervision in 2021 CR 2958 for the offense of possession of controlled substance penalty group one, one gram or four grams on April 18, 2022 for a term of five years? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, stay. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Vi uh, actually, Your Honor, on violation condition number one, uh, for the June 9th, 2022, the state would like to order the amended, uh, striking the language uh, W slash I D E L, which, which stands for with intent to deliver uh, to the court. Any objection? No objection, ma'am. All right. Ms. Garcia, do you understand your attorney has uh, 10 days to prepare for a trial? Uh, did you understand that's a substantive change to the motion to revoke? Yes. Uh, knowing that, do you still wish to uh, continue? Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, we've lost video. Okay. All right. Uh, State? Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number one, on or about the ninth day of June 2022, Hebert County, Texas, the defendant, Emesis P. Garcia, committed the offensive possession of controlled substance, only group one, four to 200 grams, in violation of condition number one. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. Your Honor, we'll waive the remaining violated conditions. All right, did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number one, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to six years in prison and up to a $1,500 fine? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number one? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number one true. Uh, I'm assuming there is no agreement on the motion to revoke. That is correct, Your Honor. All right. And the state is silent on 2022 CR 8569. Uh, in that cause number, uh, defense, do you have any witnesses? No, oh, yeah. All right. Then the court will hear argument. Well, on, on the, uh, for, are you saying for the application for probation? Yes. Yeah, the application for probation. Now, when we were, uh, Trying to negotiate all of this uh, MPR and everything. So my understanding is, and of course, right now I'm saying it's different, but my understanding is that the MPR uh, agreement for the uh, for punishment would be the, to run concurrent or to run uh, together with the, the case that she she plead, she plead on. So uh, that's what on that new case, Your Honor, we're asking this court to. Give her another opportunity. Now, she did uh, not comply with her probation. In fact, she, as your honor can read, she didn't even start her probation. She, I mean, she didn't show up for orientation or anything like that, that which caused the uh, warrant and everything to come in. Now, she's realized she's been in jail since November. She realizes that she has, this has to stop. And she picked up a new case. It doesn't get any better because it gets worse as you go along. However, I'm asking this court to give her another opportunity. And, and why should you give her another opportunity on um, probation is because I think that she realizes that this has to stop her. She had a death in the family of her grandmother last year that was her mother figure. She uh, lost a brother to also consider. Uh, contributed to her mental or mental state, which made her uh, do uh, bad judgment. So uh, we're asking the court to give her the opportunity to uh, go on probation, do things right, go back because she's got five daughters to go on to, which are in the hands of their family. She has a father that is there that is willing to support her and, and she also has a job that's waiting for her if, when she gets out. Yeah. So we're asking the court to give her the opportunity. It's a second opportunity. I know that the facts in her case don't warrant it, but we're asking the court to do so. Because I, I, I had long conversations with Ms. Garcia, and I can tell the difference in attitude as to what she has to do in order to continue on with her life. Now, the uh, CAP evaluations are um, recommending uh, safety, uh, and safety right now is 
I know it's a long waiting list and it'll be maybe a, a year, I mean, a few months before she goes to safety. Uh, but we're asking the court to uh, follow the, the uh, other alternative, which is the outpatient treatment and put as many uh, requirements on her for her probation for to do the outpatient treatment. That way she can go to work, she can go take care of her, her children and, and she can prove to this court that, that she, and I'm not saying she learned a lesson, I'm just saying she had uh, learned that she has to stop. That's the only word that can come up with. She has to stop, she has to, she has to grow up and be there a parent for her children. And I'm asking the court for probation. All right. Um, so, anything you wish to say, Ms. Garcia? That it shouldn't be used for this. All right. Do you want to raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So, help you God? Yes. You can lower your hand. You're going to have to make sure you keep your voice up. State your name for the record. I'm with this Garcia. All right. What would you like to say? That I apologize that I was in the wrong day. I used an excuse when I, it's not an excuse, and I've acknowledged that now. I'm not saying that, oh, now that's the pen. No, I know that I have to do what I need to, and I do have five daughters, nine, eight, seven, six, and five, and I need to be there for them. I do have a job lined up. I do have support from family, and it's time to go on with my life and to carry on and do what I need to do as a woman, as a mother. And, what I need to do. All right. Uh, Ms. Garcia, I'm looking at your criminal history. And sometimes people are learning their lessons, you know, but your criminal history is not good. And when I look at criminal history, I'm not necessarily looking at it to say, oh, this person is a bad person. I'm looking at it to see, has there been any type of intervention? Has somebody learned their lesson? Is there anything that I can do to protect the community and have this person be in, you know, a productive member of society? And I'm looking at your history and there have been plenty of interventions for you and you have not taken advantage of any of those interventions. And there's, I don't think there's, I don't think probation is appropriate for you because of that. And because of um, other things that are in the PSI report, the fact that I previously had you on probation to work with you. And I think any defense attorney in this courthouse, in this courtroom will tell you that when I put people on probation, I'm hoping that they will be successful and I give them conditions to, um, have tools to be successful. And I always ask people when I place them on probation, I always ask them, is there anything else they need from the court to be successful? And what you've done since you've been on probation is not report, you just picked up new charges. And I can't have that. All right, uh, the court is gonna send it to you to a $1,500 fine, time and money. I'm sorry, in cause number 2022, CR 8569, the court will sentence you to a $1,500 fine. Time and money run concurrent. This will run concurrent with 2021 CR 2958. Five years in the prison. Take in consideration night mag number 688702. Give you credit for any time served. It's going to show you what's entitled the trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Because this is a felony conviction, uh, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you need to speak to an attorney. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Now, if you would like, because I do see the TAP evaluation, they're recommending that you do inpatient treatment. If you would like, I could recommend you for the therapeutic community. Uh, it is a drug treatment program. I cannot force them to put you into it. All I can do is recommend it. And then you will have to recommend it yourself. It does not include, increase the amount of time that you're in custody. Would you like to be considered? No. 
Would you explain again, Your Honor? All right. So the therapeutic community, I do not have jurisdiction to force them to place you in the therapeutic community. The therapeutic community is a program at the prison that will hopefully help you with any drug issues you have. If you are accepted into the therapeutic community, it does not increase your prison time. So for example, in this case, you've been sentenced to five years prison. If you're in the therapeutic community and you do not complete it, they're not gonna say, oh, she didn't complete it in five years. So we're giving her six years. If you're up for parole and they deem your parole worthy at two years, they're not gonna say, ah, we're giving her parole. We would give her parole, but because she hasn't completed the therapeutic community, we're not giving her parole. So it's merely a program to help you hopefully with any drug issues you have. Yes. All right, and we'll do a, a, a request for therapeutic community. All right, we can go off the record. Ms. Garcia, I know you wanted uh, probation. Uh, your attorney told me about your daughters. When you get out of prison, you need to make sure that you stay on the straight and narrow so you can be in their lives, all right? All right, good luck to you.